Hey, let's get our tithes and offerings together. And I got a whole message that I want to share with you that I might just save this message for next week. And uh, not that I need to. Uh, pastors, I am not in short of messages. Someone asked me, how do you prepare for your messages? I said, I got a whole book that's written. And they said, you mean you wrote a book of all your messages? And I said, no, I didn't. God did. The messages start with Genesis and end with Revelation. And I got all the teachings I can, I can get out of that book. So I'm not one of those guys that's short of anything to say. And the Holy Ghost tells me this is what I want you to share. And then that's what I'll share. But I have this thing I want to share with you. We're going to get our tithes and our offerings together in the book of Ecclesiastics. Let's go there real quick. And, and uh, usually I like to release everybody. I like to say 1215, but that's been doing 1230 and even as late as 1245. So we're going to see how we do today. Amen. Are you guys okay with this? I like letting you out early enough before the Baptists get to the restaurants. <laughs> but this time, I think I'm going to let you out after the Baptists are done eating. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Book of Ecclesiastics. Uh, Pastor Juanita, do you remember what scripture it was? Do you have it prepared there? Not sure. Chapter 7, Ecclesiastics, chapter 7, verse 12. Just real quick, I'm going to share this with you. Ecclesiastics, chapter 7, verse 12 says... For wisdom is a defense as money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. I, I, I find it interesting, the book of Ecclesiastics is, the, is a book written by Solomon, the wisest man to have ever lived according to the scriptures. He makes this statement and these statements that, that we find in the book of Ecclesiastics are like the sum total of his life. It's like, you know, he's an old man now and he's opinionated like all us old men are. If you got gray hair or no hair, <laughs> you're opinionated. You got your opinions, right? You already know. You know a thing or two. And somebody might want to tell you, you know, some young pup will show up and tell you what they think. But you know already, you know what you know, right? And you're just going to say it whether they like it or not. And you don't even care how they take it. You just want to say it, right? You know what I'm talking about, Hoel? You know, you just kind of put it out there whether you like it or not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you. And here it is. And you can debate it all you want. But you debate it when I'm gone because I'm going to give you the note and I'm going to run. And that's what Solomon did here. And he makes a statement. He says, for wisdom is a defense as money is a defense. What a statement. Wisdom defends you like money defends you. Some people have a hard time when you talk about money in the church. It's your hang up, not mine. Because the word is written, says a lot about money. He makes a statement, money's a defense. It calls money a defense. For instance, if you're hungry, what do you do? You go out to eat, right? And when you go out to eat, you throw a little bit of money out there and it defends your hunger. Whatever it is you need clothes, you go throw money at it and you get clothes. Whatever it is that you're challenged with, money will defend you. There's a defense to it. If you have money, you, have, you are empowered to provide for whatever it is that you need. But he makes a statement. He says, okay, now that you all have the materialism down of the money, let me tell you something about it supernatural. Wisdom will defend you. He's one, he knows who his audience is. His audience are a bunch of stubborn greedy individuals that only think about money. So I'm going to show you something. Instead of thinking as money being your defense, you need to start using wisdom. See, wisdom is the ability to use knowledge. You increase in knowledge and you know how to use it. That's what wisdom does. Wisdom will defend you. The Bible says that when God created the earth, wisdom was there with him. Wisdom was there when we were fashioned. Wisdom was there when we were formed. Wisdom was there when he said, let us make man. And he was talking Father, Son, Holy Spirit, body, soul, spirit. He's about to create. But wisdom was with him. That's what the word says. So he makes a statement. He says, wisdom is a defense. Wisdom will defend you of things that offend you. Things that come against you. Things that hold you back. If you learn how to turn on wisdom... You discover how you can be defended. 
The Bible says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. If you don't fear God, you got no wisdom. Zero, zippo, nada. If you don't have the fear of God, and there's a lot of people that say, oh Lord, give me wisdom. Because you know the scripture says, he who has no wisdom and a mask of God who gives to us freely. That's what the word says. But there are people that have no fear of God and then they want wisdom. But the word says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. But if you don't fear the Lord, how do you expect wisdom to turn on? Amen. So how do you know whether you fear God? This is what happens when it comes time to give our tithes and our offerings. When it comes time to give tithes and offerings, it challenges a lot of people because you're touching with a person's money. And there's a lot of people that have money, lack money, work for money, but don't have their money right. And when you don't have your money right, that's what the problem is. The problem is not the money. The problem is you don't have your money right. You got your money being spent in places it shouldn't be spent in alcohol and drugs and lying and pornography and, and, and philandering or, or, or maybe not that, maybe spending it in concerts that you shouldn't be going to or spending them on people that aren't really going to pay you back. Because if you understand the power of money, you understand money will make more money. When you understand money, money will make more money. Are y'all hearing me? When you understand money, Money will make more money. But a lot of people don't understand money. This is why we have the scripture also in Ecclesiastics that money bores a hole in your pocket and flies away. Money grows wings. When you don't have your money right, that's when you find yourself broke. And nobody likes to hear that. They tell me all the time. Pastor, when you going to quit talking about money? I said, well, when the Bible decides to wipe it out, I'll quit talking about money. Because that's the problem that a lot of people have is that they don't want to hear about money because they don't have their money right. If you have your money right, you'd have no problem talking about money. Amen? If you fear God, you got wisdom. There's a research that I, that I did, uh, the top 10 poorest cities in the United States. And I want you to see this first one right here in USA News. This is the month of September, USA News. Top 10 poorest cities in the nation. Look at number one. What's number one? That's Park, Texas. Where are we? We're in the poorest city of the top 10, we're in the poorest city, far. She's screaming, my wife is screaming, well, we're only going up, there's only one way of going when you're the bottom. There's only one way to go, are y'all here? Everybody go like this, we're going on up. We're moving on up to the east side. Guys, we're going up, ain't no doubt about it. So do you, Talk about buying new cars to a person that's dying of cancer? Huh? What do you talk to them about? Healing, right? You got to meet them where they are. They need healing. You're going to talk to them about healing. Well, if I'm going to be talking to the city of far, I better start talking about prosperity. Because the word of God will turn you. The Bible says he maketh us rich. The word says that though he was rich, he became poor, that we might be made rich. He tells us that he teaches us how to prosper. How can I stay away from those scriptures? You know, the, poorest, the poorest community in the United States of America is the city of Far, according to USA News, and that came out on the month of September. We're in October, by the way, for those of you watching this on delay. So what's the coalition here? For wisdom is a defense as money is a defense. Well, apparently there ain't no money in far. We need to get some wisdom inside us so that way money, money will grow. I spoke this out the first time I came here in 2019 that we're prospering, that God's going to bring a level of prosperity to the Rio Grande Valley like never before, and it's going to come from the city of far and abroad. In Jesus name. If there's ever a place for you to invest in, you need to invest in this city. Because as an investor, you don't invest when the prices are high. You invest while the prices are low. Come on now. 
I challenge every one of you to go on Zillow.com right now, or not right now, tonight. I'm preaching right now. Go on there tonight and find out how many pieces of property you could buy for under $100,000. Come on now. You're going to find all these little red dots pop up everywhere. 78, 75, 81, 82. Man, far is for sale. Buy it. Buy it. You need to start buying far out. Because prosperity is going to hit far. If I'm, if I'm buying stocks and bonds, I'm going to buy when it's low, not when it's high. And I'm going to buy when it only has a way to go up. And now the prosperity of God is going to hit the city of far and it's going to prosper. If you can understand how to change it. Are you ready for this? There's another number that I want to share with you. Put that second thumbnail up. This is another number, 69. Let's call it 70%. There's 880,000 people living in Hidalgo County. Do y'all know where Hidalgo County is? What is the center of Hidalgo County? McAllen, Far, Edinburgh, Mission. Where right now? Actually, it's Far San Juan, Alamo, right here. This is the center of it, right? You got Highway 281, right here, 281. That splits us north to south. And you got Highway 83, for those of you who've been here for a long time. You don't call it Highway 2. You call it Highway 83. <laughs> Is it Highway 2? I don't even remember now. But you got a cross section of where the two highways cross. And you know where it crosses? Right in the middle of far. We got infrastructure right there. 70% of 880,000 people do not attend church regularly. Do not, 70% of this county does not go to church. Are you hearing me? I got 1,200 chairs in this building and I got 30% maybe of people inside the building. I got 25% of the people inside the building. I'm telling you, we're living proof right now and there's other churches all over this place that are in the same position trying to figure out why are the people not coming? That's the question you need to start asking the Holy Ghost. And I believe in the name of Jesus, we're going to change all that in Jesus' name. We're going to win souls, 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 and souls. Are you all with me? What are we going to go win? And, 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 wait, 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 what are we going to do? Huh? What, 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 what are we after? What, what? Come on, help me now. Don't give up now. And what else are we after? So, 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 souls. And you know what else I want? I want souls and some souls and some more souls and souls. I'm looking for souls and souls and souls and souls. Hey, hey, pastor, what do you want? I need souls. I need some souls. I need some, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta plunder hell and populate heaven. Jesus name. Just after souls. That's all I want is souls. That's all I want is souls. I just want people that need Jesus. Because I'm looking for testimonies that will go tell other people about what Jesus did for their soul. Amen. Wisdom is a defense like money is a defense. The excellency, I like this part. The excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those who have it. I'm going to take some of that life in Jesus' name. I'm not looking for the money. I'm looking for wisdom. If I have wisdom, I'll go get all the money that I need. I ain't worried about the money, but I need to use wisdom. And wisdom says the, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And if a person doesn't pay their tithes and give their offerings to God, if they don't do what God tells them to do, they have no fear of God. And if you have no fear of God, you have zero wisdom and zero possibility of receiving wisdom until you fear God. We have to have a fear. We fear our waiters more than we fear our God. Come on, when was the last time you went to a restaurant and you looked at that, that ticket, you look at that waitress or that waiter, they might have done bad service. You're still going to tip them more than 10%. And you look at the receipt, it's going to give you, I don't know what happened here, Pastor James, but my receipts used to say 15%. 18 or 20 percent right three little boxes 15 18 20 that they changed that i see it now it's 18 22 and 25 percent and it's almost peer pressure now because it started off as a little tiny square now they're these big old buttons oh and let me tell you if you got more than five people sitting on your table they're gonna put it on there whether you like it or not line item it and they still don't remove the three boxes are you hearing what i'm saying 
Nobody ties, nobody tips less than 18% and expect to walk away thinking that you're not going to get something bad with your food next time you come around. But then when the preacher says you need to tithe 10%, oh, that preacher, all he wants is my money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What I'm saying is that God requires wisdom. He wants you to have wisdom because he wants to prosper you. He wants you to have wisdom so he can prosper you. But wisdom, the beginning of wisdom is what? Say it again. And if you don't tithe, you don't fear God. It's because the word says, and God knows that you'd have a problem with that. That's why he said in Malachi, test me, prove me, try me. That the original translation is, allow me to show you my righteous cause. He says, test me. Here's what he says, test me. He says, you're robbing from me because you're not letting me prosper you. He says, try me out. He says, you rob from me, not the money. It's not the money. It's not the 10% that you're stealing from God. You're stealing from God the opportunity to bless you. Pour out the windows, to open the windows of heaven. Pour out a blessing not room enough to receive. Rebuking the devil off of your life, off of your children, and off of your job. That everybody will call you blessed and you'll be full of joy. Seven blessings that come with the tithe. And when you don't pay your tithe, you rob God from doing that for you. Oh, why doesn't he do it anyway? He's such a good God. No, because he won't bless a curse. He can't bless a curse. The word bless means make more of what you already have. And if you're walking around with a curse because of disobedience, he can't bless that. That's why it doesn't work. That's why you're, you're, that's why you're 70% not going to church. And, and that's why far is the poorest city. And the Rio Grande Valley happens to be on the bottom of the, the 20. Several of the cities are top 20 most poorest places here in the Rio Grande Valley. Because 70% of the Rio Grande Valley doesn't go to church. And if 70% don't go to church, much less they are not tithing. Are you seeing how the domino effect takes place? But we're going to change that. Amen. Come on, everybody. We're going to change that. We're going to change that. What did I tell you? A few weeks ago, Pastor James, I said this a few weeks ago. I said the Rio Grande, the Rio Grande Valley is going to know Center Church as the church of all the rich people. I spoke that by prophecy. The, the Rio Grande Valley is going to know center church by all the rich people. But they're coming in poor right now, but they'll be rich. You're going to be rich. You're starting off poor right now, but you shall be rich. Are y'all hearing me? I'm not asking the rich people to show up. I want all the poor people. I'm the poorest community here. I need, I need all the poor people to come so that way God will show forth. Prove his word. I'm not knocking on the doors of bankers and lawyers and doctors. They're showing up. They're showing up, but I'm knocking on the doors of everybody I can. I applied for a TV station here in the Rio Grande Valley. We're just about to get it. In, I'm in a radio station, radio station in, in the Rio Grande Valley, and we're about to get it in Jesus' name, an FM radio station. We're about to get it. Are y'all ready for a radio station in the city of Far? In the city of Far, on this property, preaching the gospel through radio in Jesus' name. Why, why am I doing that? Because I gotta, I gotta figure out where those 70% are. I've been spending thousands of dollars myself, not the church, myself, spending thousands of dollars on airtime on channel 5.3 every single day, Monday through Friday. Thousands of dollars preaching the gospel to the city of Florida, the whole Rio Grande Valley, because I'm, I'm trying to get the gospel into the 70%. Amen? And then I just signed an agreement this past couple of weeks to pick up channel 35.5, a full channel. We're going to build what's called, what will be called King Jesus Television Network that we're going to build from our own location right here in Jesus' name. Because I'm after 70% of those that are not coming to church. If they're not here, I got to go out there. That's what Jesus said. He shared a word. He says, you got to go to the highways and byways and go pick them up. So that's where I'm going. Glory. You coming with me? How many of y'all coming with me? Praise the Lord. You're coming with me and you're coming with me? Hallelujah. If you're part of Center Church, you're coming with me. We're going to do it. Come on, kids. I told every one of the kids. I told all our kids that are up in classroom, I said, you're going to learn television because you're going to start producing TV shows. Didn't I say that? Didn't I say that? I said, you guys are going to produce some TV shows. I even did an interview with these two right there and, and Sister Claudia's daughter did a, did a TV show on the gentleman right there. And we're going to keep doing more. And the rest of y'all, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. 
Get ready to preach the gospel. It's not about me being on TV. I won't put, you, I won't put the TV camera pointed on you. You're hiding in the back, and I'm going to put the camera where you are in Jesus' name. So get your tithes and offerings together. Let's see God do something for you, with you, and on you, and through you, in Jesus' precious name. Get your tithes and offerings together. Now, there's three different ways of giving. Quickly, is centerchurchfire.com if you give online. Of course, you can use the envelope that's in the seat back in front of you. But you can go to Center Church Far. You can use your phone. Go to centerchurchfire.com, the little tab that says Give Center. Click on there. And you can give that way. You can go to Cash App, dollar sign Give Center. Makes it real easy. And then you can go to Zelle, for those of you that give by app. And it's Center Church Blessings with an S at gmail.com. Test God. See what God will do. Give, and a tithe means 10%. So if you give 1%, that's not a tithe. 9% is not a tithe. Figure out what you made this week. Give 10%. Watch what God will do. Amen? It's five areas of giving. I'm only talking about tithes. There's tithes, offerings, gifts of faith, seed, and sacrifice. The five areas of giving. Tithes, offering, gifts of faith, seed, sacrifice. He blesses you in five areas. Spiritual, physical, social, mental, financial. Some people think it's all about money re return. No, you save more money if you're never sick. You save more money if you always have food. Save more money if you got good friends. Save more, more money if your clothes never get old. Save more money if your car never breaks down. Are you hearing me? You see it? Now, spiritual, physical, social, mental, and financial. Everybody's all caught up with the money. If you're thinking about the money, it's because you're you're you got a men, you got a you got a men, uh, um, uh, a greed. Is you you've been developed by the world's economic system, not the kingdom economic system. Kingdom economic system is far greater, and I got like nine minutes to get through it. So I don't know if I'm gonna get through that nine minutes. I'll do the best I can. All right, you guys ready to give? Turn your lights on if you're giving online. Stand to your feet if you will. If you have an envelope in front of you, in, in your hand, lift it up. Let's go before God. Stand to your feet. Let's go before God. Let's bless it. Let's bless our tithes, our offerings, our gifts of faith, our seed, and our sacrifice. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I know I don't want to talk about all this stuff, but you won't leave me alone. So, Father, it's all your fault, Father, that you're going to bless them. It's your fault that you're going to pour out your abundance upon them. It's all your fault that you're going to pay off all their debts. It's all your fault that, that you're going to heal their body and you're going to restore their land. It's all your fault. And we put all the blame and all the glory on you, God, for you're the one that sets us free. You deliver us. You heal us. You, you restore us. You renew us. You make us fresh. You abound us. Father, we give you praise for this right now. We ask you in the name of Jesus, let it be well known around the world of your great grace over our life, Father. We just receive it right now in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, drop your offering off if you can. If you gave online, that's okay. Thank you so much. You can be seated.